For our next refactoring, we're going to look at a usability issue and the user interface that goes along with this creation. If you think about how, how things work, if, if we go and create a, a new user here, when we have a failure, what happens is that we go back to that listings page. We don't um, do anything nice like tell the user here's what your problem is or uh, here's the things that you did right. We just say, oh, sorry, unable to create a, a new user. That's not the, the nicest thing we could do. So in order to explore that a little bit for, further, I want to look at inside the, the Rails console about some facilities that Rails provides to us when we try to do something like that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a user and then I'm going to uh, just like we do in, in that create function here. So let's do a user.new and let's give it our failure case of just the name of John Doe. And we have that user object right here. We know that if we try to save it, it's going to be problematic. And it is. But the nice thing about it is that uh, if we look at the the user object it has a method called errors and if we look in there we get this kind of uh, hard to see thing that looks kind of like a, a hash but uh, notice that it's got this m at messages so we have for the name attribute we have some message for email address we have an attribute for the password. We, we have a, an attribute. And in fact, in, in that errors message, there's a, another uh, object that we can, messages, there we go, that we can access that gives an array of messages that describe the problems that we took. So. In, in this errors one, we know that there's a, a message associated with name and email and password. And what this full message does is it combines those values together into a nice uh, sentence. Name has already been taken. That has to do with the fact that John Doe is not unique. Email can't be blank. Password can't be blank. So it'd be really nice if we could display these messages to our user and not display them uh, and have them try to remember what those are but display them on the same page as our form. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to change what happens. When we have a successful save we are going to do what we already do. We redirect to some site. But instead of going to to this path now let's go ahead and go to our new users path because we want to show these messages in uh, in our form and, or in our form page so that we can go ahead and and see those while we're trying to correct them so um, the next uh, thing that we want to do then is start up the Rails server and see what happens when we make a mistake. Alright, so when we try to create our new user that is problem, we now get redirected um, course that's not new users path because it's only one user it's new user path so let's try that again and we got redirected here 
Now we don't get the message that we got before and we're not surprised because we haven't done anything about that. But now we're, we're at the right spot. So now what we can do is uh, we want to look at our view. So let's edit our app view users new And what we would like to do is we would like to see if this user object has any error messages. So what we're going to do is before we display the form, what we're going to do is say if our user.errors.any. And any is just a method that all collection objects have that just returns uh, the opposite of nil and inside that if statement we can we can put our message so um, let's do something really simple here let's do a p paragraph and let's say that the form um, there are and now we need to know how many there are there are user errors dot count so that's the the number um, errors in the form so now we have a way to say that there are errors uh, let's stop here before we try to show the errors because uh, we, we have to fix some other problems. So let's go ahead and try to uh, go and try to submit a John Doe again. And we don't see the errors. Uh, we don't even see that there are errors. And we know there should be three errors. Be the username's not unique, the email isn't blank, is blank, and the, so is the, the password. So let's look at what the problem is. Let's go back to our controller and the first problem we should see is that here we used a local variable user here we used a instance variable at user and that is a problem so let's switch this back to an instance variable here um, and there we go so now we have our instance variable and we'll go ahead and save that go back here and try to submit again our John Doe and we still don't see our error so let's go back and try to figure out what's happening and the the problem is uh, right here this redirect to uh, the redirect requires the browser to do a new request and so it's going to do a brand new request and that's going to come to this new and so our at user is going to be this value right here not the one that pop is populated with our bad name email and or password values so if there is a problem down here we don't want to generate a new request and lose all the errors that we we set up in here we want to use our at user that we did before. So instead of doing a redirect, we want to do something else. Instead, what we would like to do is we would like to render, which means um, use the, the view, and we have to give it a name for our view, and we're just going to use the new view. So what we're going to say is rather than using our create view that would be the default, for the create action, we want to use the new view in, instead. And we've already created the new view here, so if there's a failure on creation, it's like we jumped back into this method and went on before as if we hadn't created, which is exactly what we want. If there was a problem, we want to redisplay the form so that they can resubmit a, a correct solution. So if we save that and go back to our page now and try to submit something we now see that there are three errors in the form which is
Great, that's exactly what we want to see. Um, and you'll notice there's a interesting change in the format and it's no longer username email and password in the line let's go ahead and just quickly look at what happened if uh, to kind of help with your curiosity notice what rails did automatically for us and we'll come back to this later these this div is not a part of our view because Rails knows that in our views users view, that these are inside of a form for this user object and that user object now has errors Rails tries to be really helpful here and says here I will surround that error because I know it's an error because it's this this name attribute right here I'm going to surround those with a class called field with errors. I'll do that automatically just so you know that you're, you can add some CSS to any class with this class name field with errors and you'll be able to do some um, nice display of that. For right now we'll just note that it, it's there and we can come back to it later. But we do have our output there are three errors in the form, which is nice. Uh, let's go ahead and get, list what the, those three errors are. So if we go back and what we would like to do here is um, list all those errors. So let's create an unordered list because the, the errors might come in, in any order. And we can iterate through our errors. But let's go through the messages since they're, they're nice. And what we're going to do is get a message. And what we can do now here is we have a list item and we just want to display what that message is. Alright, so now we iterate through all those nice messages we get a copy of them, we just display it in a, in a list item. So let's go ahead and do that. And um, the other nice thing is, notice that um, Rails automatically populated this John Doe field because it knew that our user had a John Doe and so it displayed this. So Rails kept that information for us, so if we try to resubmit it, now we have those three messages which are great. This, this is a much more usable form already than before because now we know there are three <coughs> errors and these are the three error um, the, the values that we typed in and so we can say oh email can't be blank let's do some email uh, someone at example Com, and we can fill that out and now we're down to two errors we can do our, our password and no we don't want to there are one errors oh that's another um, not so nice so let's visit this again there is a method that rails provide because there are lots of cases where this, where you have a value and a word that need to be associated with each other. In this case, it's this value at user.errors.count and this word, errors. And sometimes it should be plural, sometimes it should be singular. And, and it be, can be distracting to constantly put if it's greater than one, display this. If it's less than or equal to one, display that and so forth. Um, and so Rails has a built-in method called pluralize. So let's take advantage of it. Pluralize. And you pass it two parameters. One is the value. And the second is the singular uh, word. So this is error. So 
This will return error if it's singular or errors if it's plural automatically for us. So let's save that and re resubmit this with a password. And there are one error in the form. Uh, that's a little bit <coughs> harder, uh, but uh, we can pluralize that as well. So we can pluralize at user.errors.com. And the singular is is. And we can go like that. So save that. Type in a new password. And we get. Ah, there one is. So that's not as, as helpful for us. So we might want to uh, try to figure something out more or we can reword it so we don't have to play this game. Um, so you can say something like um, the form has this many errors. So now you don't have to try to pluralize it. And so let's try that. We will do password. Submit that. The form has one error. Ah, that's much better. Now it's grammatically correct. Um, John Doe the second. So we can go John Doe I, I. password. And we've added John Doe II to our thing. So now we have a much more usable system here. I'll add a period just for niceness. We have a much more usable system because if we make a mistake, we keep our values that we typed in, we see what our error messages are, and we can try to respond to them uh, appropriately. And this is a much more useful thing. And now, as in all good refactorings, we better check that we remain green. So we're going to run the tests here and the tests should re remain green because we didn't do anything strange but you always want to check like this because you can always do some weird things and ah, we have. So notice this when we had this error we don't have anything that has alert danger in there anymore. So let's make this paragraph have that alert danger class. So we're going to go in here, class equals alert danger, and we can run our test and make sure that now we're past. And so this is a good demonstration of how you can forget one small little part of your tests. And without the tests, we would have, have been in trouble. But now we are back to green like we want it to be.